You remember that little spat between CZ and the Indian exchange was your ex? Well, we're going to turn to that next and talk about a little more intrigue between those two firms. Was your ex is one of the largest Indian based exchanges and they hit a little spat with Binance, which Binance said at the time that it owned Wazir X and then backed off of it. Wazir X said that they had a relationship with Binance and then backed off of it. There were some tweets, little fisticuffs going on. Now we have new data from Merkle Tree Report and the proof of reserves showing that actually a lot of Wazir X's 90% of their assets actually are based on Binance. Why does this matter? Well, if you think about Binance and how it's so large and how uh, so many people use it, and then you see that exchanges are building on top of it as well, you start thinking a little bit about contagion. You start thinking about are the people at Wazir X and the people using that platform safe if Binance collapses or has any trouble? So that's one angle on this. And then on top of this, you actually have to ask a little bit about why there were some problems between Wazir X CEO and the Binance CEO CZ at the time. Why were they talking about this going back and forth when Wazir X was actually using Binance for most of its applications? Jen, I'm going to throw the story over to you. I think this adds like a little bit more color. I love seeing the data show that. Yeah, well, first of all, I love that Wazir X came out and is publishing their proof of reserves, trying to be a little bit more transparent for their Indian users. Secondly, when I read this 90% number and saw that 90% of their funds are being held on wallets on Binance, I was kind of shocked. And it took me back to the Twitter spat, right? So during that Twitter spat, CZ said, Binance provides wallet services for Wazir X. Wazir X domain is transferred to our control. We were given a shared access to an AWS account. And that's what they were like fighting about, right? They were like, well, that's not exactly correct. We still completely hold our funds. And now this inf- they've voluntarily published this information. I And I don't want to cause FUD and worry. But if I was an Indian user and I saw these numbers, I I don't know. I just think it's a great time to be holding on to your own coins. Like Wendy O always tells us, get a hard wallet, hold on to your own stuff while we work out the interconnectedness (laughs) of this industry because it's getting a little bit frightening. Wendy? Yeah, I agree with you 100%. And also, I remember covering, covering Wazir X on my channel when they first like started business. So big shout out to everybody who uses that exchange. And also shout out to everybody over in India that is watching Coindesk TV, the hash. You guys are absolutely awesome. And as always, please make sure you custody your coins. That 90% figure there, I don't like that. I don't like it any way, shape or form. Um, I'm not telling you all to remove your funds off exchanges, but I'm also telling you you should consider using cold storage. That just is too much risk for me. Because just in case something does happen to Binance, it's going to automatically impact Wazir X users, like no matter what. I don't know, like the math wouldn't add up to me properly. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, Zach or Will, if you guys want to take it and maybe give like a good, like a pro to how that would be a good thing that 90% of the funds are on finance wallets. I'm not sure. If, I just don't think it's a good thing. Jen, maybe you go ahead and then I can add some color there. Well, I had a question. So maybe it's, I'm just going to pop the question over to you, Will. And it kind of is is similar to Wendy's question. Why, why, why would Wazir X not look at holding the funds themselves? Why, why is this a good business decision? So it's the same question that Wendy had. (laughs) Yeah, no, I think there's a few explanations. I'll go real quick, hand it off to Zach. I think the reason for it is they're probably using Binance for some sort of trade execution. If you look at the margins and spreads for crypto prices, Binance has the best. They're the, the most dominant exchange in the world. Uh, for a lot of their trading pairs, you actually don't get charged at all. There's no fees. And they're, they're so dominant right now compared to everyone else, especially during this bear market. So many exchanges have gone belly up and Binance has just taken their market cap. So it makes sense for a lot of these smaller exchanges that can't really get those good price quotes to use Binance as their back end and then have a front end with their own customers. Honestly, it sort of makes sense. And it's something that we see in the traditional banking sector as well, right? Where commercial banks work with larger banks and then they work with like federal regulated banks. That's normally how federal or financial institutions work. It's not very shocking to me to see that. That being said, there is some contagion risk there. Zach, up to you. Yeah, I'm just sitting out all things Indian crypto. If they like, it is so intense. It's, so, it's one thing and then it's the next thing. It's what we think it's good and then it's bad. There's always something going on in crypto in India and it's just, it's just, it's a lot to keep up with. So this is another mm-hmm. entry into that thing where we have the spat between Binance and Wazirx. Now we're seeing that there is clearly some relationship there. I don't know what to believe when it comes to crypto stuff in India. It's a major market, especially for developer talent. There's a ton of people there. There's always speculation that they would kind of go the China route, at least the government of, in- of India, in imposing a strict ban. That didn't end up being the case, but then they've imposed significant 
tax levies, driving a lot of crypto activity offshore. So I don't really know, man. India, it's crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm tapping out. Zach summed it up so out. nicely. You, you know what we need? We we need an Indian novella to let kind of dissect what's going on to explain this to us better because I feel like it would do a better job than mainstream media. It would be so much more colorful and exciting because let's face it, novellas in every single culture are just my absolute favorite. So much drama, so much seduction, mystery, murder. You just don't know what's going to happen next, guys. <laughs> the Coindesk like novellas. We could be yeah. a new thing. After Crypto Crooks, you know, it's the first narrative podcast, you know, first telenovela from Coindesk featuring the Indian <laughs> crypto scene. I'm in. Let's do it. 